Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive in. Absolutely, let's do it. All right, so today we're tackling something that sounds simple on the surface, but gets crazy complex the more you think about it. Ooh, I like those. Lay it on me. Temperance. Temperance, okay. Yeah. Not just like, don't party too hard, though we'll get to that. We've got some excerpts here. One straight up calls temperance the most important virtue, which like, whoa, big claim. Bold move right out the gate. Right. And then another gets super into how this plays out in our daily lives. So buckle up. It's going to get philosophical. First up, the classic definition, temperance doing nothing in excess, finding that right amount. Now, I don't know about you, but my initial thought is kind of sounds boring right like where's the fun in that and that's the thing we often trap temperance in this box of just restraint saying no all the time and nobody wants to be the fun police but you hit on something key there it's about the right amount that's where things get interesting right like it's not about never having dessert it's about not having the entire dessert buffet and that makes me think of wasn't it aristotle with that whole golden mean idea bingo aristotle's golden mean is essential to understanding how temperance is way more nuanced than just, nope, can't do that. Hmm. Think of it like courage, right? Too little, you're a total coward, but too much. You're reckless, which could be just as bad. The golden mean is that sweet spot in the middle, true courage. So it's less about squashing every desire and more about like, okay, this desire is pulling me in this direction. How do I keep myself from careening off the edge of a cliff? Exactly. It's about finding that balance point. And you know what this reminds me of? Something from our source material on Roman emperors. Apparently they were big on overspiced food. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Like drowning their food in at levels of spice. This emperor, Hadrian, who was all about moderation, basically said they were poisoning themselves. He was like, guys, you're missing the point of pleasure. You overload your senses like that. You can't even taste the good stuff anymore. Oh my gosh. That's like when you have one too many cookies and suddenly they're not even good anymore. Exactly. Your taste buds are fried. You've hit your limit. And you know, this whole idea applies to way more than just food. Oh, absolutely. It's like, you can even get sick of your favorite song if you play it on repeat for a week straight. Right. It's everywhere. Hadrian, he applied this to physical fitness too. Like back yeah. then, it was gladiators training themselves to death. Now it's people pushing for crazy fitness tracker goals or those insane diets everyone's always on about. Even a good thing taken too far becomes unhealthy. Which brings me to those questions from our other source. Yeah. If we're trying to actually live this whole temperance thing, finding that balance point, the golden mean, not just for cookies and workout routines, what does that even look like? How does it actually create a more balanced life? Well, for me, it comes down to choices. Are we on autopilot, just indulging every whim or restricting ourselves out of fear? Or are we making conscious choices that line up with what we actually want? Okay, so it's not about never treating yourself, it's about being mindful about it. Exactly. So, is there ever a point where, you know, you're just indulging too much? Like, where's that line? I think that's the constant question, right? Because excess, whether it's with work, or social media, or even our hobbies, it catches up with us. But so does deprivation. It's about finding that middle ground, that sweet spot. And that's going to be different for everyone. Right. Like my ideal Friday night is probably not going to look like everybody's. Exactly. It's so personal. Yeah. It's about asking yourself, is this choice actually making my life better? Not just in this moment, but in the long run. So it's more like a lifelong project, not just a rule book. Totally. It's a skill, a muscle you build up over time. It's about paying attention to what actually brings you joy and fulfillment and what might just be a quick hit of, you know, whatever. Man, this is making me rethink a lot of things. So it's less just say no and more, how can I find the sweet spot? There you go. Which I guess that's the real challenge, isn't it? Finding that sweet spot in all areas of life, huh? Well, on that note, I think we'll leave you with this. If temperance is a muscle, what are some small ways you can start exercising it today? Food for thought, until next time. Like a metronome, life ain't no paradise. Women dust in catacombs, mind steel clad, heart calm amidst the cyclone. Strength in the stillness where my scars has a keystone. Stoic sword slice through chaos, never once deterred. Struggle forge the iron will, silence is preferred. Pillars patience, wisdom's echo never slurred. Battleground strange and virtues blaze undisturbed. Vice is tempted, whispers in the midnight. Virtue's lantern, cutting through the dark night Battle rages, yet I'm standing on the zen height Stoic vision, crystal clear, guiding through the fight Running through the gauntlet, fire in my veins burn Pain a teacher, lessons hedged, pages that we turn Fortress of the mind, no retreat, no concern Virtue steady beacon, storms I discern Running through the gauntlet, fire in my veins burn Pain a teacher, lessons hedged, pages that we turn Fortress of the mind, no retreat, no concern Virtue steady beacon, storms
storms I discern Against the current, standing tall, never bent World spins frantic, I refuse to relent Timeless wisdom flows every single event Stoic calm, unyielding, life's true testament Weight of a thousand trials, break chains ascend Mind over matter, wounds men start again Clarity and silence, where's the anger transcend Stoic path, unshaken and till the very end something with her life she got on my last nerves, but she forced me to go get my GED. I will never forget, Dee Dee called me to her house. She said, my mom, uh, my mom is gone. Can you come over? Her house like, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. You know what I'm saying? What? Got on my bike, you know what I'm saying? Three mile ride. I was just riding over. Her mom is gone. Her mom is gone. She invite me over. Wow, finally. Her mom is gone. Her mom is gone. Finally, after all these months, it's on and popping. I get to the house and she comes outside. I'm like, oh, what you coming out for? I thought you said your mom was gone. She says she is, but we need to talk first. I was like, talk about what? She's like, I got to ask you a question first. And I was like, all right, what you got to ask me? Hurry up. She says, do you love me? I said, love you. Yeah. Yeah, I love you. She was like, no, nah, no, nah, do you love me, love me? I said, yeah, I love you, love you. She said, all right, I want to show you something. I was like, yes. So she pulled a piece of paper out of her back pocket. I said, what? It was an acceptance letter to college. She said, I got accepted in the college. And if you don't go get your GED and follow me to college, I'm breaking up with you. Let me just tell y'all something. I hate school. Never liked school, dropped out of school. But when she said that, I might, I might be a little slow, but I ain't stupid. I went to night school, studied and passed my GED and followed the college. We've been married almost 33 years. No matter how hard you work, you can't have everything you want. Eventually, most of us end up settling in some part of our life. Only two things can reveal life's great secrets, suffering and love. Books give a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. Plato. Be forgiving, be understanding, but do not be a fool. Recognize a problem. It's half the success in solving it. The universe has no restrictions. You place restrictions on the universe with your expectations. Deepak Chopra. Nature. The Stoic's ultimate goal is to live in accordance with nature, to be one with nature and live harmoniously, to appreciate and gain an understanding of your place in the world, to practice your ability to see things greater than yourself and live a virtuous life. Living according to nature is living your best life. Living your best life is done by maximizing your potential, by recognizing the difference between what you can control and what is out of your control. You must be honest with yourself and others and be willing to seek the truth in every circumstance. By doing so, you must also see challenges as a way to progress and not as a setback. Seek to find the good in every situation and use it as a teaching tool. Let nature be your guiding force and your moral compass on your positive pathway in life. Training, read the books, do all the stuff is to develop more insight, letting our mind be nourished to think, ponder and wonder and conceive ideas, projects, purpose, give structure to something for the future, whether it's better health or better career, better future.
Next, the mind needs to be exercised. And we talked a bit about that earlier. Exercised by debate. Exercised by reading both sides of the debate, both sides of the question. Major life issues, major political issues. Don't leave yourself out of the great debate. One, the mind needs to be nourished by ideas. Second, it needs to be refined and stimulated and exercised by debate. We need both sides of the human drama represented. The reason why the Bible is such a classic book in studying all kinds of stories is because the Bible is full of stories on both sides, the evil side and the good side. The Bible said, Old Testament said, this king came to power and he was a good king. He ruled for 18 years. And then it says the next king came to power and he was a bad king and he put up idols. He became the bad king. So the, it reads good king, bad king, showing both sides of the human spectrum and drama. Some stories that we read in the Bible of people to admire, others are people to despise. In your library, you need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. One book to show you how noble someone's aspirations can be and the other book to show you how despicable and how evil someone's goals can be. Both sides we study good and evil, one we love and one we hate. We study. The truth is, everyone is going to hurt you. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. It isn't manly to be enraged. Rather, gentleness and civility are more human, and therefore manlier. The nearer a man comes to a calm mind, the closer he is to strength. Marcus Aurelius Fatigue is the best pillow. Marry before 30. Have kids before 35. Work and earn actively and sufficiently till before 40. Make passive income workable before 50. Plan to retire from work activity before 60. Do everything for family, but expect nothing from it, not even from your spouse. Realize that you are the observer, not the observed. Papaji. Certain miscellaneous matters. There are certain penalties fixed as by law for those who disobey the divine administration. Whoever thinks any other thing to be good except those things which depend on the will, let him envy, let him desire. Let him flatter, let him be perturbed. Whoever considers anything else to be evil, let him grieve, let him lament, let him weep, let him be unhappy. And yet, though so severely punished, we cannot desist. Remember what the poet says about the stranger. Stranger, I must not, e'en if a worse man come. This then may be applied even to a father. I must not, even if a worse man than you should come, treat a father unworthily, for all are from paternal Zeus, and of a brother, for all are from the Zeus who presides over kindred. And so in the other relations of life we shall find Zeus to be an inspector. What a fucking break. A hundred percent, dude. It's like this thing in the back of your head, okay, maybe this will break them. Maybe this will break them. So we haven't broken each other yet, but I'm sure the day will come. In my mind, a lot of times, man, I'm like, it doesn't mean I quit. I, I don't quit. You know, I may not make it the first time, but I'll come back. I got to call an audible. I can get my head back in the game. I got I to gotta figure this shit out. It doesn't mean you leave. It means you study it more. It means you study it more. And, and whenever I fail at something, people always say, man, how do you handle failure, man? I fail a lot, dude. I fail all the time. 
They go, how do you ha handle it? What I'm trying to do, and this isn't being arrogant, man. I, I, it's being real. Not many people are trying to do. There's not many people that who, can, who can even open their mouth and criticize me when I do fail. Because I'm on I'm trying to do shit, man, that many people aren't trying to do. But I'm looking at failure as failure.